Now listen, I want you to know what, what we're talking about here, okay? This is not like TV only better. This is life. With the consumer release of the HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, and Gear VR, and PlayStation VR coming out soon, virtual reality is actually getting closer and closer to the mainstream, finally. But what's in store for us around the corner? This video explores how VR has been represented in film and popular culture, and what that might mean for the real-life VR industry of the future. Damn. The early 80s brought us Tron, which took us inside the software world of a mainframe computer. How did the dude get inside this world? Whatever the hell this light scanning technique was. This method even worked 30 years later for his son, albeit more instantaneous. Other methods of entering VR have included using hard light holograms built into the environment around you as seen here on the classic holodeck of Star Trek. The movie Existence chose a more direct route, using bioports inserted at players' spines. The Matrix takes this one step further, jacking straight into the brainstem. Inception, arguably about virtual reality, chose to use a magic briefcase. Certain sci-fis use headsets that interact with your brain somehow, as shown here in Demolition Man or the British show Red Dwarf. <laughs> However, the near future of realistic VR will probably rely on head-mounted displays like Johnny Mnemonic uses here. Bonus points to Keanu Reeves for being in pretty much the most films about VR. He's even bringing his John Wick character to the Vive later this year. There are plenty of examples from film regarding how immersive virtual reality can be. Yeah, that's a piece of somebody's life. Pure and uncut. Straight from the cerebral cortex. You're there. You're doing it. Seeing it. Hearing it. Hearing it. Just ask Denzel Washington from this scene in Virtuosity. The pain appears very real. Although Sly Stallone was not convinced during his VR encounter with Sandra Bullock. First sex has been proven to produce high orders of alpha waves during digitized transference of sexual energy. All right, obviously, what do you say we just do it the old-fashioned way? Ew, disgusting. You mean... You're not quite, uh, human, are you? Scotty from Star Trek isn't pleased with synthetic life either. <sighs> synthetic scotch, synthetic commanders. However, the philosophy of reality is probably best summed up in this scene from The Matrix. I know this steak doesn't exist. I know that when I put it in my mouth, the Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. After nine years, you know what I realize? <sighs> Ignorance is bliss. But what is there to do once we're all in VR? Well, eventually, you'll be able to play virtual kickboxing, experience motorcycle games, and even have virtual memories implanted a la Total Recall. Now, help me out here, Doug. You were interested in a memory of, uh... Moss. Get your ass to Moss. 
but there are even more interesting psychological implications elsewhere. One story from the Animatrix takes a very unique approach to what can be done in VR. The participants all enter a simulation with an enemy combatant, a sentient robot. The purpose is to change the allegiance of this adversary. The idea being is that the simulation can help change the core programming of this artificial intelligence. Although the success of this venture is ultimately... Uh, ambiguous. What does that mean? It means buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye-bye. These kinds of virtual reality experiences are already being explored today. We make these pieces because we can put you on scene, make you feel like you're a witness to an actual event. You're not separated by a television or a screen or to try to make you understand what it's like to be there, what's happening for Syrian refugee children. While it's a more simplified example compared to the Animatrix, Noni de la Pena is producing VR content that tries to elicit an empathetic response within people. This positive and productive side of VR is seen all the time in film and TV, from preventing harmful diseases. After AIDS, there was NRS. After NRS, there was UBT. To gleaning insights from famous scientists. The day that apple fell on my head was the most momentous day in the history of science. Not the apple story again. To tapping into our brains for accelerated learning purposes. There is no way for me to prepare you for what I'm going to do now. The great possibilities to influence humanity with VR are astonishing, although people will still always use it for their personal, weird fantasies. You're just an 18-year-old girl taking a shower. <laughs> Regardless of the positives, if science fiction has it right, VR is going to have some pretty negative consequences as well. Now, I understand. You could wake up crazy like Quaid from Total Recall. Suffer severe delusions of grandeur like Job from Lawnmower Man. Or even be turned into a subservient half-human like that guy from Cloud City. Some developers brag that the only limitation to VR is your imagination. It's incredible. It's just like being here. Yes! But what if your imagination betrays you? That's what happened in this episode of Red Dwarf when Rimmer's mind got very cynical. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. What's going on? Our faces have been spared with jabber about being alive by killer ants. Why? Why not? <laughs> You're talking to Ingelbatter, aren't you? I'm sorry. Yeah, we were having a great time till you came along with your diseased brain. Worst case scenario, however, is something like from The Matrix or Sword Art Online. Being trapped in a virtual program against your will could be pure hell. And whether or not it's evil robots, a master controller, or the people behind World of Warcraft that trap you, it all sucks. Even if they're just hijacking your subconscious for a little bit, the results could be deadly. Dang it, Maul! This is the biggest fear people have of VR because it plays on the very idea that makes these new headsets so damn cool. That is, they are incredibly immersive and realistic. This technology is simply a route to powers that conjurers and alchemists used centuries ago. Better Than Life is able to detect all your desires and fantasies and then make them come true. I'm outraged by this. I have been invaded, violated. How dare you use me like this? Science fiction aside, when people start using VR all the time, and when the technology gets to a place where relationships, games, and other experiences can be flawlessly programmed, the question will be, will anyone ever go outside again? You can get paid to be controlled, or you can pay to control. I'm a hell now. We'll just have to see. Until then, keep going outside and playing Pokemon Go, which is actually AR.